Good morning, good afternoon. This is a Friday update on Hurricane Lee for September the 8th, 2023. As always, my thoughts in this video are mine alone and making any decisions, please consult the National Hurricane Center and your local officials for the latest information for where you are. So this is a look at the latest true color visible satellite imagery on Hurricane Lee. And definitely a big change from yesterday. We can even see the degradation of that eye overnight last night, and it's barely just there. It has gotten a little bit better to find, but still a rather anemic look to the eye with a lot of clouds covering it, making it really hard to see. Now, taking a close and zoomed in view on Lee for this morning, we can see a pretty good structure change that has occurred since last night. And what I mean by that is that this is a little bit more asymmetrical than it was yesterday. And the reason why we're seeing that is because if we look Underneath, so this is the feathery white theorist that um, satellite is measuring right now. See this? This is all outflow in the upper levels, the, uh, the barotropic flow at 200 millibars uh, above the ground, which is about 38,000 feet or so. But what we're not seeing very well, or you might see it easier, is see these little filaments of cirrus right here? You can see these right off towards the west of the image of Lee, that's actually shear that is being encroached underneath this outflow. You can even see the Sears clouds just moving right underneath the outflow, which is indicative of about 20 to maybe even 25 knots of shear, which is pretty strong. And that's why we are seeing a degradation with this eye. It is trying to get better organized in the last few frames here as the eye is trying to clear out but every time it does it really just kind of gets cloud filled and that's because again the shear that we're seeing the shear is not expected to deteriorate anytime soon in a significant way that would likely allow um, lee to re-intensify and will probably continue weakening from here on out Looking at the zoomed out view on the water vapor imagery, we can see why there is shear out there. If we look at the outflow, um, there is outflow here, there's outflow here with all the feathery white cirrus. But what's going on here is now our anti-cyclone in the, I would say at about 300 millibars is located right down in here. So now we got Lee that is on the northwestern side of that barotropic outflow type ridge that lee created last night and it's one to argue if lee was so strong last night that it was able to kind of reshape this ridge in a way that there is now shear kind of um, coming underneath this outflow so instead of it being uh, constructive to lee it's probably more likely destructive with its inner core structure and you can really see that lee um that lee's eye really has really waned quite a bit here and this is probably going to be a thing for a while as if we look off towards the west here there is still shear on the system in fact we have other observations that we have today and one of these is from the university of wisconsin um, this is i don't use this map very often showing you that there is about 25 to almost 30 knots of shear in out of the southwesterly direction which is being sampled. So this is recon aircraft. They are flying and doing a mission inside Lee this morning. And there has been a huge jump in air pressure. Even within the last uh, pass. From their first pass it was at 942. Now it's 944. I would probably assume right now it's probably at about 946. 948 millibars. Which is certainly a lot weaker than it was last night when it was down to 927, 926 millibars. So a weakening storm here certainly does not ask for this to be a Category 5 anymore and is a Category 4 as we speak. This is also the observed wind field from the air, uh, recon aircraft. This is um, from, yeah, this is from this morning. It just came out not too long ago showing you that there is no Category 5 force winds anymore. And a lot of this wind right now is really weighted 
on the northeastern side, and it makes sense because we're got we're getting our shear that is out of the southwesterly direction. So this wind field right now is very asymmetrical with um, hurricane force winds that are very symmetrical or asymmetrical as well. And that's probably going to allow Lee to not strengthen very much anytime soon. This is a look at the latest NHC forecast, One winds that are now 155 miles an hour, so it is no longer a Category 5 hurricane. It was one last night with winds that did max out at 165, moving off towards the west-northwest at 13. If we look at our key messages, Lee, um, okay, let's update that. Lee's core is expected to move well north of the northern Leeward Islands, the Virgin Islands, and Puerto Rico this weekend and early next week. Dangerous surf and life-threatening rip currents are likely in the northern Leeward Islands be beginning today. These conditions will spread westward and northward, affecting Puerto Rico, Hispaniola, the Turks and Caicos, and the Bahamas, and Bermuda through the weekend. It is way too soon to know what level of impacts, if any, Lee might have along the U.S., East Coast, Atlantic, Canada, or Bermuda late next week, particularly since the hurricane is expected to slow down considerably over the southwestern Atlantic. Regardless, dangerous surf and rip currents are expected along most of the U.S. East Coast beginning on Sunday. Continue to monitor the latest updates to Lee's forecast during the next several days. I want to make that clear with you all. Looking at the latest um, chances of tropical storm force winds on this advisory, again, right now, it looks like there is about a 5 to 10% shot at seeing maybe some tropical storm force winds on Puerto Rico, especially... If there's an eye replacement cycle, which we have not seen yet take place, the recon aircraft is in there. They have not seen any structure changes or internal structure changes in a way that would lead to an eye replacement cycle. So why is that important? Because if you have an eye replacement cycle, it does lead to gradual weakening, but also the wind field expands quite a bit. We have not seen that, so that means this is still a compact hurricane with most of the strongest winds on the northeastern side, meaning that the southwestern side has lesser in the way of hurricane force winds, and the tropical storm force wind field would probably also be a little asymmetrical, meaning that these islands here may not actually be in as much trouble as what we might have thought last night, but still in all, still expect some very dangerous, life-threatening surf, some big crashing waves, that sort of thing. Tropical storm force winds are expected um, to hit these islands, uh, maybe if there's any chance of it, from about Sunday morning all the way into Monday night. Considerable slowdown to the hurricane is expected. Now going back to the track again, here we can see a major hurricane expected through the next five days. This is all the way up until about Wednesday morning. Big cone of uncertainty here, so there's a lot of room of possibility. This hurricane still could make uh, make it towards the west and then turn north and head um, straight towards, say, Maine or Nova Scotia versus if the storm gains more latitude quickly, it might just turn out and hit Bermuda, which would also not be a good thing since Bermuda is a small island and you can deal with some major hurricane force winds. So now let's take a look here at the latest global uh, models. Uh, this is the Euro model. This has rendered um, since, um, yeah, this is the Euro Z output, by the way. So if we go forward and look at this, um, uh, we can see that the system is expected to do that northwesterly, even west-northwest at times, movement through Monday, and then it could go uh, come further west. Now it depends here. If the system is weaker than what is forecasted uh, by most of the model guidance, with this rigid mind, a weaker storm actually might actually push this further west versus a stronger storm that might allow it to gain latitude despite this ridge that is in the way. Remember, the trough is well up here to the north, and we do have this 500 millibar ridge that is carved out on the Euro model. So that still allows the forecast to be very uh, uncertain um, this far out because uh, we know it might go west a little bit, but when does it make that turn to the north? And that's going to be essential here. 
When we look at the euro out to day five, we can see this trough up here to the north that does approach the region. We have also a little bit of a short wave here that at least allows this ridge here to split in two. We have a ridge down here. You can see uh, the wind barbs that do this. They kind of come down around like that. We also have another ridge that is also to the northeast of the system. So what this is going to allow is some very weak steering currents, but also when that northerly turn occurs. It's all about the timing with this trough here in the northern or the central United States in regards to where Lee will be exactly positioned. That will matter a whole lot too. But out, uh, this is the five-day forecast looking out to this period in time. We can see a trough here moving over Indiana and over Ohio. You can see it on the edge of the, the image here, the thumbnail. Uh, and this is where the ridge is. So um, the, the, this trough right here is going to be crucial. If this is too slow and too farther northwest, uh, this system being a little also slower than usual, this could actually drift a little further west before making its way to the north. Now, the chances of this hitting Florida are not expected. We're not seeing a landfall or any concerns to the Florida coast. And the reason why is there's so much westerlies. Um, the background flow here is westerly, most likely, even down here in the southern Gulf of Mexico. So therefore, the system is not going to even be able to even try to move westward. And it is really hard for this system to go westward under this background flow. So instead, the system is going to be moving north at this time along the eastern seaboard. And we have a pretty good idea today that that's probably going to end up happening. I'm still not ruling out the possibility of shifts further west, but we have seen a lot of consistency among the models today, the 0Z, ECMWF, and the GFS. In fact, if we look at the GFS right now, we can see that the system is nearly identical to that, but only that the GFS is a little faster because of this trough right here and seeing that Lee might be here a little sooner, allowing the system to turn north maybe just a hair sooner than what the Euro shows. So if we look at the eastern seaboard sector really quickly here, Again, if this happens, there would be um, some sort of a landfall or some sort of impact on Nova Scotia. No landfall expected yet over Maine or the eastern seaboard. Um, there will be some high surf. I want to make that clear. I might be going live today. It all depends on how strong Lee is. I probably will do it anyways for the sake of it uh, to give you all latest updates on where Lee might be headed next. Uh, but if we look at the Euro model, the, the Zero Z up here, we can see how this trough over Indiana will move north. And again, if that trough is weaker and a little further north, then it might not have as much influence on where Lee goes. And this model in particular wants Lee to actually stay offshore entirely. So uh, after all, this model doesn't want a landfall, and that's a Euro. We have one more model to show you um, in this video, and this is the HAFS A model. This is the model that has not done very well. While it did really good leading up to the intensification phase, but it doesn't seem it's it has corrected some, but it's not seen that the system is very weak right now. And this will be fed into the 12Z output of the Hurricane models since Recon is in there. And in fact, if we get a latest update on Recon, yeah, they're not in the center yet. So it's going to be quite some time before we get new updates out of those models. So looking at the HAVS A model, we can see that the system is not going to intensify very much at all. Probably continue to weaken based on what I'm seeing with all the shear that continues. We'll see though if it re-intensifies, if it clears any of the shear. For one thing, the shear was not expected to be say 20 or 25 knots, all right? We were expecting that shear to generally be under five or 10 knots. It is a lot stronger than what most of the models thought. And therefore that really throws a wrench into the forecast. If 
Lee is going to be able um, to kind of whisk a lot of that shear away. For right now, in my own forecast, I'm probably going to be very generous with this uh, output. And I'm going to probably base my forecast off right now with the h -Wharf model, which has this at 945 millibars. And then probably weaken weakening to 960, 950 millibars thereafter. And I do not see this system really becoming any stronger than what it is right now. Maybe plus or minus 5 or 10 millibars. Uh, we'll see about that, but right now for the time being, this does not look to uh, perform as what most of the models have expected. So looking at now the statistical intensity prediction system, um, nothing as far as the rapid intensification, which is good. Um, let me zoom this out so you all could actually see that. Um, so right now, shear is expected to be about 15 to 20 knots, but again, that could be generous given that we have not had the new data in. We'll see with what that shows, but I'm very sure right now that the shear is going to kind of hang around here for a while and then eventually go up, perhaps reaching 40 to 60 knots beyond, say, six or seven days, which could really induce so quick a weakening that this might not even be a hurricane once it passes near Bermuda. Some indications of that, which means that this is going to weaken in a hurry once it encounters that shear and some cooler waters left behind Franklin, that little kind of carved out path. So the intensity guidance here is pretty much straightforward. I am below the NHCs and I'm not really confident enough that this is going to re-intensify very much from here on out. In fact, it's probably going to end up weakening, so my intensity forecast is below most of the guidance right now, and even perhaps below the NHC's forecast um, at the moment, not really that low. Actually, it's going to be more of this, and right now, at the very least, I do expect winds by day 5 to be at least 125 miles an hour so probably down to a category three perhaps in the next five days so lee losing traction out there in the atlantic for the time being so where is lee gonna head next uh, on the ensemble spaghetti plot right now it is moving towards the northwest uh, west northwest gonna probably turn a little bit uh towards the west and again a weaker storm at the moment uh in this forecast will likely move further west Versus a stronger storm that will likely kind of avoid that because it's going to follow or it's going to field more of the deeper layer barotropic flow in the atmosphere and then it goes northward. But most of the models do keep this away from Bermuda. We shall see and wait if that holds true in later forecasts. But we have a little bit better understanding now that there is less wiggle room now. There's better consistency among the models on how that might end up being. This is a look at the latest, um, yeah, this is a look um, at the latest output. Let me make sure I have that right here on the Ensemble forecast, on the Super Blend, that is. And we do have uh, the latest here. Let me open this up in a new tab. So you can see there is still that wide range of possibilities, but now we have had more of a correction and towards that this is not going to hit land at all across the eastern U.S. So that is a good sign, but still there is quite the uncertainty here. More than likely on speed, is this very slow? Is this exceptionally fast? We just don't know yet, and we'll pr we're likely going to live stream on this today as planned just to kind of cover the range of possibilities here and other things, looking at recon data, that sort of thing. All right, now that was it. We're going to do it with uh, Lee. This is kind of an overview on Lee uh, for this morning, on this morning's update, by the way. And right now, Lee is headed off towards, again, the west-northwest at a fairly good clip, probably about 13 or so miles an hour, weakening as it does so just slightly. We are going to have to wait and see on how this evolves throughout the day today. If Lee is able to hold together in despite of this 15 to 25 knot shear that it is going through at the moment. 
But that's going to do it, folks. Share, like, and subscribe if you did like today's video. And I'll be back with you this afternoon with a live stream on Hurricane Lee.